few months back, I announced to the world that I am a registered therapist with all of the necessary credentials. Abby, Abby. And before you ask, yes, I am a fantastic therapist. Doc, I'm just so sad all the time. It's like I, it's like I don't have any motivation to do anything in life anymore. Have you tried not being sad? Maybe trying to do an activity that's a little more jovial to get your mind in that happy place again, huh? You know, what I, I love to do is just read a good book that really makes me happy. I just open this great new fantasy world and I, I just feel so much more at ease. You know, Harry Potter used to be one of my favorites, but then J.K. Rowling, none of that all happened. And I'd say that. Maybe Bardugo is probably my favorite. Six of Crows is just exceptional. Jada, where'd you go? Little do you all know that I also have a law degree. <laughs> yep. And before you ask, yes, I- Little one, I wonder what is real and what is not. Which memories are false and made up? Who is friend, and who is foe? When is death, and where do we go? I'm an excellent lawyer. I tell all my clients, no matter the situation, to confess guilty. Guilty is charged. <laughs> and no, I'm not stealing Noelle Miller's entire bit about this, um, because that would be wrong, and lawyers don't do anything bad. Today, I'm looking through r slash legal advice to find people who really need top-notch advice that I can definitely give to them. Mm -hmm. Because again, I am a lawyer. Let's get into it and, and make sure to leave your advice down below as well. Although it won't be nearly as good as mine. Peasant. Don't have money for college. <laughs> Make money. Okay, stop going to fucking Starbucks every day. Bobby, Bobby. You know, if you did that, you'd be able to afford college. Landlord attached GPS tracker to my car without my consent or knowledge. Now, I mean, this is just standard practice for landlords. Though... I know my mom, she's technically my landlord. She... <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, this is just standard practice. I don't know what the problem is. Hello. Hi. <laughs> lawyer here. Yeah, yeah, lawyer. D Lo what's it called? <laughs> what's it called when you have a, do a, a, a law degree? Do, the, do you get a special name, like doctor? No one is believing that I went to college. No one. A little background. My partner and I were getting the spare tire to my car unmounted from the bottom of the car when he discovered a circular magnetic device attached to the lip of the bumper of the car. Now, come on. I know that's a classic place to put it, but put it somewhere where people aren't going to find it. Like, the, if you put it on the bottom of the car, no one's going to see it at the bottom. This is tips. What, <laughs> how to do things illegally. 101. <laughs> by me, the lawyer. I know, because I'm, in, you know, I'm inside. I'm inside the, <laughs> the law, okay? Balls. We initially couldn't tell what it was, but after using Google Lens, we... Who the fuck? <laughs> you are the only person who's ever used that. If I found a tracking device on my car, I didn't know what it was, I'd be like... Well, I got to know, know what this is, <laughs> you know? I, we discovered that it was a Lander C tracking device. Thank you for that info. I'm putting that up there. I might need that. When we discovered this, also, does anyone ever... I just want to go back to the title real quick. Does anyone ever attach a tracker to your car with your consent? Is that something that usually happens? You're like, hey, can I put, put a little tracker on your car? Oh, sure. Sure, Bill. <laughs> go right ahead. I, I know. <laughs> it's okay. You, know, you want to know where, where I am all the time. It's all right. When we discovered this, we were obviously worried, um, but I was especially worried because I had been stalked and attacked by an ex in November of last year. Whoa. Thinking it belonged to him, we filed a police report and had them find out who the owner of the tracker was. To our surprise, the tracker was purchased by our landlord of about three years. See, why? If, the, if you're going to track someone illegally, get a tracker that isn't being tracked. <laughs> buy it with cash. Again, illegal 101. <laughs> you buy stuff with cash. You don't buy it offline. Buy it somewhere where they can't track the tracker. Like, come on. Balls. The biggest tracker of them all is the fucking government that is watching me right now through my thin lens. I see you. I see you. I ain't doing nothing illegal. Billy, can you go mow the poppy fields? <laughs> I'm not doing. 
Apparently he had been checking our location periodically and the device was live when we found it. Okay, why though? It came as a huge shock to us because he seemed like a genuinely good person. Ah, stop right there. You thought a landlord was a good person? Who has a family and who, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to be too mean to this person, but like also just because you have a family and helped us install floodlights and curtains to our home after I was attacked doesn't mean that he actually is a good person. Just know that everyone has a mask on the outside, okay? And underneath is something sick. The police have been trying to contact him to get some answers, but he has not returned their calls. What? It has only been a day though. Yeah, when does a landlord ever return their calls? Other than feeling unsafe in our own home, we also feel like it was a huge invasion of privacy and honestly a breach of trust. Yes, you're exactly right, it was. <laughs> Again, our rapport with him seemed good and he seemed genuinely, seemed like a family man. So we just wanted to know what the future of our housing situation is going to be. Um, leave, run far, far away. Hopefully you have the funds. You run, you run so far away, go move to, I don't know, the Bahamas. Go somewhere where he cannot track you. This might be my favorite one we're gonna read today. I love this. Received a clearly used sex toy from a company and they're calling me a liar. I ordered a few sex toys from Adam and Eve and received the package today. It was unopened, taped completely. I uh, opened the box and noticed one of the toy boxes was ripped open. I open it and find that on the toy there are pubic hair. Whoa. Okay, that is brutal. I thought I thought they were gonna say like I noticed it had some dried, sticky stuff on it. Okay, stuff that was once sticky and then now is dry and crusty. I noticed that I don't know. It smelled a little weird. That is great. Who is shedding their pubes? How puby are you? You're just shedding your pubes. That's so crazy. Uh, the cord was loosely wrapped. It was clearly a used toy. See, how do you? I got in chat and tell them what happened, and they said that that's hard to believe. I added link to screenshots. It's hard to believe. Are we sure this isn't your pubes? I need to check. Those pubes look a little red. You got red hair. What are you wearing right now, too? <laughs> Just, what? Yeah. Just wondering. I called customer service and two people basically cussed me out. Said that's illegal. There's no way I'm trying to pull one over on them. That's the first thing customer service should do is say that you're wrong and they're right. Because as you know, the customer is always wrong. That is, that is the saying. Like they were reading from a script at first, extremely rude, and they both refused to transfer me to higher up. I said if I want to return it, I can pay shipping. Um, no, exactly, um, no. I paid expedited shipping, and for them to act that it was, is unbelievable. Not only is this disgusting and unsanitary, but I'm livid, yeah. I'm not sure what to do next. I can only take a loss of $130. I'm not going to take a loss of $130 if I, what? You ordered $130 of sex toys? Granted. If you buy some two like really nice things, they're gonna be like 70 bucks. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm too judgy judgy. I know, I've been told my whole life I'm really judgy, okay? They tell me this all the time. Yeah, fucking Vinny and the kids, they always tell me how judgy I am. I say, well, you know, I'm judgy for a reason, okay? My my cousin, he died. The mafia killed him. <laughs> so I'm a little judgy. Best thing you could do, keep fucking heckling them until they give you what you want. The best thing you could do when you want something, just keep going at it. It's ruined when she bought it. Yeah. No matter what, you just keep going at it. Eventually, you'll get what you want. Because people hate annoying people. Wait, screenshot and pics? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to laugh at this person's misfortune. Yes, I do. But that is... Okay. I, I obviously am not going to show you guys this, but I got to... I love the thing on the back of the package. Again, obviously I can't show it. Bloomgasm. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's so corny. And the pictures on the back are so funny too. <laughs> what is, I can't, I'm not even gonna describe it. I don't want YouTube to get up, up my ass. Can you put this up your ass? That's a question, I didn't see that in the diagram. Forgot about a self-defense object I had in my carry-on. What will TSA do? Same. Every time I go to the airport, I always like, accidentally leave a bomb in there. Uh, the TSA agents, I go in there, it's it's so funny. They're always like, Luke! And I'm like, ah, guys, I'm sorry. I should have left my bomb at home. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I know, after 9-11, it's harder to do that on a plane. I, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. Balls.
Okay. Let's see what's in here, shall we? Yeah, like, yeah, let's see. <laughs> Sir, what is this? Uh, that's just my, my pillow. For the, for the flight, I have neck pain. Did you bring a bomb again? Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot to leave it at home. Oh, I'm so sorry. I get it. It's just a silly mistake. I understand. Stuff happens. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, right? <sighs> Thanks. All right, well, you can just put it back in. Yeah, let's do that. Oh! I, 22 female, forgot I had brass knuckles in my carry-on bag. What? <laughs> Are those not illegal in like every state ever? I think you're facing some bigger issues when you got something that's literally illegal in your bag. It's one thing to have something that you have a permit for. Brass knuckles, bitch. What are you doing with brass knuckles? What, what a crazy thing. Get a, just get a gun like a normal person. The TSA f agent found them. They said I could dispose of them, which I agreed to. Okay, they gave me the prohibited item notification paper, took my DL and asked where I was headed and why. I told them I'm going back to college. They're purely for non-lethal self-defense because I had a lot of problems in my college town last year, got robbed, stalked. Yeah, makes sense. And I had completely forgotten that they were in there. Got them as a gag gift. You, uh? you know what I give away a, a, as gag gifts as well? Glocks that are fully automatic. Funny, funny, right? Um, they just, everyone always gets so excited they open it up. They open up the bag, they're like, Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> I did not mean to pack them. Uh, they put them in a drawer, sent me on my way, and said I'd probably be fine since it was my first offense. I don't know, I'm so worried about this. What could happen? I've never had any problems with the law before. Should I get a lawyer? How much would the fine be? Am I overthinking this? We would persecute these cases on very rare occasions. Why am I doing that? Uh, we would persecute these cases on very rare occasions. Always guns, never the other weapons. It's anecdotal. Of course, the law allows for charges to be brought under these circumstances, but most often it wasn't worth our time. Either way, always remember, do not speak to any law enforcement about this matter. If you are approached, shut up and lawyer up. But don't lose sleep over this one. Exactly. Actually, I would lose sleep maybe just a little bit. Maybe so you could maybe call me. All my clients keep leaving me, so maybe, you know. High school fundraiser refuses to supply grand prize Taylor Swift tickets. Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota, eh? You gotta go to go see some Taylor Swift, eh? Go sing, I got a blank space, baby. That's not how they talk. What the fuck am I doing? My daughter won two Taylor Swift tickets through a high school fundraiser that they had held a couple weeks ago. You really believe that your high school got a hold of Taylor Swift tickets? When asked about the tickets, the school said they weren't able to provide them and that it was actually a student that promised to provide them. That this was done through a school club. In response, they said that they would refund my daughter's $2 donation. Yay? <laughs> Yay, I guess. <laughs> this was a huge event at the school and obviously she's crushed. Students and staff all participated in the event and said it was big news when she won. Well, get over it. That's what I say. Can't see your favorite artist. <laughs> oh, well, you know what happened to me? Bought fucking BTS tickets in 2020. Oh my god, a tooth fought for tooth and nail for those babies. Guess what fucking happened? Coronavirus! That happened, okay? I've been through it. I'm in the thick of it. I spent so much money on those. And then I waited a full two years for them to give me my money back. Took away my seats. And now guess what? The, they're not even in the group anymore because they're not they're on a break. <laughs> so don't come with me! With your little generation Y whining, okay? Get back in my day, okay? We had coronavirus. Um, as far as I can tell, this is blatant criminal fraud? Criminal fraud. High school fundraiser. They said they'd give me Taylor Swift tickets. And they don't have them. The school collected money on the grounds that there was a prize. The prize never existed. Okay. That is, okay, that's true. Not sure of the amount raised, but my guess is it was in the thousands. Students and staff participated. What are our legal options? She's a great kid on the honor roll. Okay, what, why do I care? I want to hold someone accountable for this. Help! You know, I joke and joke, but like, don't, don't make promises you can't keep. That's what my uncle, that's what my cousin said to me, and then he got shot off by the mafia. <laughs> my neighbor deliberately sprayed pesticides into my food on the grill while I was cooking it. 
Long story short, well, oh my, thank God, because this is like a whole dissertation. What the fuck? Long story short, my neighbor who does not like me deliberately came out and started spraying chemicals to use to bugs at directly at my grill while I was cooking food. She did this two times in a row. The police say that's neighborly disagreement, and I ask her not to spray chemicals near my grill while I'm cooking. My question is, can I take any sort of legal action against her? And if so, what kind of attorney would I need? I began filming on my phone at this point. Okay, so you have it on proof that she did this. <laughs> I said loudly, you tried to poison my family. She answered right back. You got that right. I asked her, what did you just say? And she said, I told you to go ahead and call the police. And I said, no, you tried to poison my family. And she said, you got that right. She laughed and shook her head. And I went inside to call the police. You literally have her on camera. Okay. If there's anything, I think, you know, the law, take it from me. It, most of the time, it doesn't work in your favor. <laughs> but you literally have proof. I would find it hard to believe that they would not charge her with anything. The grill could have exploded. Okay, wow. <laughs> Fucking zero to 100. The grill, it could have exploded. Come on. I could have served that food to my family and poisoned them. There's so many terrible scenarios that could have happened. Like your neighbor, like you killing your neighbor, that could have happened. That's what would have happened if it was me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's so illegal. Neighborly issues, you know? It's just neighborly issues, brother. And what's that? Uh Yo, yo, what's that? I gotta go kill an unarmed man? Okay, sorry. Gotta get gotta get back to the work, you know? Duty calls. <laughs> Diarrhea and sensory depression. <laughs> you know how that, that shit hits you? You can't hear? Can't see? Laying in a big thing. It feels like I'm in spice. Feels like I'm in spice and I'll just be, oh, that feels really good. And I'll just, just wet, wet myself a little bit. I'm like, Hey guys, hey, anyone can hear me? I think I just dookied in the, the <laughs> sensory deprivation tank. I can feel something slimy around. <laughs> oh shit. The water just thickened up. <laughs> Title pretty much sums it up. I paid for a sensory deprivation tank experience, not realizing I had contracted neurovirus and was about to become symptomatic. Yeah, well, you should have guessed that. You should have become a prophet seer and noticed that. Initially, I was having a lot of weird hallucination type sensation. What? What? You were hallucinating and you still went to the- That's like- That's like going on shrooms, going into a sensory deprivation tank? Oh yeah. This sensory deprivation experience is gonna be wild. <sighs> Jason. Jason, you're nothing. Jason! Jason, I love you. Jason. We see you, Jason. We're with you, Jason. We love you. We love you, Jason. God? Is that you? Yes, Jason, it's me. I've come to tell you that you're shit in the tank, Jason. Jason, wake up. You've shit all over yourself. What? <laughs> oh, shit. Help? The, 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 there's people everywhere. Oh, my. <laughs> Sir, you called for help? Oh my god. Who the fuck's gonna pay for the tank now? <laughs> Where I chalked up the experience, later turned out I have a 103 fever and someone fell asleep. I woke up to an awful odor and demanded to be left out of the tank. Turned out I had diarrhea in it. I love that that's a verb. Th this alone was traumatizing experience, but now the facility is trying to charge me $8,000 to replace the tank as they do not feel that they can safely disinfect this. I don't recall signing anything with some sort of diarrhea clause. Am I actually liable here? I guess they're gonna have to put that in their, their little thing. If you poop in the tank, if you piss in the tank, if you bleed in the tank, you're gonna have to replace the tank. I feel like they could clean it, right? It's some fucking water in a tank. People poop and piss in pools all the time. You know what they do? They drain the pool. They disinfect it, put some fucking Clorox bleach on it, okay? And then fill it back up. I don't understand why diarrhea is like... It's the easiest thing to clean, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer.
Exterminator deliberately threw poison all around my apartment to get me back for reporting him after I caught him not doing his job. Exterminator things, you know. I live in a New York City apartment. The management company sends an exterminator to treat everyone's apartment every Friday. No one's home, the exterminator leaves a sticker. My wife works from home. Um, and we would find exterminator stickers pinned to the door. One Friday when I was off work, when I heard what sounded like a gust of wind push the front door, I opened the door and saw the exterminator halfway inside the elevator. I told him I wanted my apartment treated, uh, to which he responded to by rolling his eyes and letting out a deep sigh, and reluctantly returning to my apartment to treat it. Um, he was giving me condescending, sarcastic responses. After that, we didn't see the exterminator again for months, yet I kept finding his sticker pinned to our door. Eventually, we started seeing roaches in the apartment. I told my wife to sit in absolute silence and listen. Okay, one day she heard something, ran to the door and opened it, and saw that elevator door closing on the exterminator. How often does this guy gotta fucking come into this apartment? Get <laughs> you gotta exterminate the whole fucking building. The fuck? The fuck? He, how often does this motherfucker gotta come in, right? <laughs> After she told me what had happened, I called management and complained, telling them that the exterminator was just leaving his sticker on the door and not actually knocking or ringing the doorbell. A half hour later, the exterminator came back and yelled at my wife for getting him in trouble. He treated the apartment and left. The next two times he knocked and treated the apartment without any incident. Okay, I'm so confused. How often do you get roaches? What is going on? This past Friday, he rang the door, but my wife let him, after which he proceeded to spray roach poison gel all over my apartment. It was all over the walls. The floor in my cookware, in my cat's food and water. Oh my god. My wife took pictures of what happened, and I contacted management. He assured me that I would never see the uh, um, exterminator again. My question, do I have any legal recourse here? Clue this man was trying to poison me, my wife, and my cat. It was way more serious than just a shoddy job. Had me, my wife, or the cat ingested that poison, we could have gotten seriously ill or worse. Whoa! Have you guys ever heard of something a little more subtle, like anthrax? Illegal 101. <laughs> it's a lot more subtle than that. Oh my god. Balls. Listen, I'm not that old, but I feel like I'm getting old. And I know, again, I'm not old at all. I'm only 20. But as every day that passes, every year that passes, I'm like, I'm getting fucking old, okay? Aww. It is so crazy to me how people are so okay with just... Being mad, that's their first emotion. Be angry, be rude. That's the first thing people choose to do when something happens. The first thing you should do in a situation is calm down, be nice. I don't care what happened. Try being nice. Shit's only gonna get splattered in your face the more you are an asshole to someone. Even when you're in the right, why, why, why freak out? Why lose your cool like that? It just makes things worse. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know, just chill out. I think people gotta fucking chill. I say after I was screaming at my computer for an hour straight. Listen, you don't need to chill, okay? I'm in a secluded area. I'm safe. I'm safe, I think. Comment down below any advice you want to give these people. Anything you have to say about any of these stories, let me know down below. Do you need legal advice? Actually, don't don't ask me. Don't actually don't ask me. If you need if you need legal advice, go to someone else, okay? <laughs> I'm not. I don't want to be held liable for anything. So don't take anything I said in this video for fact. There's that. Anyway, I hope you all really enjoyed this video. I hope you all got a laugh out of it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like me, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you know when I post a video. I currently post Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, every Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern. Yes, that's what I just said. Uh, uh, I post commentary and comedy videos, so if that sounds like a thing, make sure to subscribe. <sighs> yep. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye. I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper